Hello, this is Brother Murdoch, and today we're going to talk about how to do an automated API test. So we've discussed previously that almost all mobile and web applications use similar design of having three different layers. The first layer being the front end, which is either your mobile app or your browser. The middle tier being the web API, and then the bottom layer <coughs> excuse me, the bottom layer or tier being your database. So when we do API testing, we are again skipping straight past the front end to the web API. And so we're doing our tests directly against that. And so here we have a test, uh, I guess, quality engineer. And we are writing tests that are going to directly invoke the web API. Okay, well, let's get started. So we've previously written some curl tests to manually test uh, the steady API. And today we're going to open VS Code and we're going to open a new window. So file, new window. And then we are going to say file, add folder to workspace or file open folder. Either one should work fine. I'm just going to say file open folder and then I'm going to go into my documents folder and go into the folder I've made for this class. Then I'm going to make a new folder called steady API tests and create it and then I'm going to open it. So now I have an empty folder and the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to open the terminal. So I'm going to say view terminal. And then I am going to initialize this in Node.js repository or Node.js project. So I'm going to say npm init, which is to initialize. Basically, what this does is create a package JSON file. I'm just going to keep hitting enter. Enter, 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 enter. And now I have a package JSON file. You'll see that my test uh, script is saying error. So if I say npm run test, it's going to fail. And it says error, no test specified. So we need Mocha because we don't have it installed yet. So Mocha is our test framework for JavaScript. We're going to say npm install Mocha dash dash save. Now it's downloading all the libraries that I need into this handy node modules folder. And I am going to now change. You'll notice my dependencies include Mocha. I'm going to change this test to say Instead, okay. Let's try my npm run test again. And it says to no test files found. And it's looking in a folder called what? Test. Oh, we don't have that folder. So we're going to make the folder. So I'm going to right click on this and say, well, I guess it won't work that way. Right click here and say new folder. And I'm going to call the folder test. And then I'm going to make a test in that folder. So I'm going to right click and see new file. And I'm going to call it um, login test.js. And the test at first isn't going to have much, so it's going to say import assert from assert because I need access to that assert function in order to assert what I think the test results should be. So I'm now going to say it, and it should have a, let's see, let's see the login API should return a valid login token. And then I'm going to make a comma and add a function to call. So I'm using the arrow function, which means parentheses, and then an arrow made out of equals and greater than and then curly braces, which contain the logic I'm going to execute. And I'm going to say, 
const login token equals blank, which at this point it is blank. And I'm going to say assert dot equal login token dot length should be 36. That's a standard token for the steady API. Now I'm going to run it again, npm run test. I just hit the up arrow on my computer and it repeats my last command here. And it's going to say, cannot use import statement outside of module. Um, okay, so I'm going to go into package JSON. I'm going to say type and module. And we're going to try it again. And now we have it running. And it says the length is zero, but it should be 36. So that's right. If you look at the length of this login token, it's empty, so it has zero. Well, we need to fix that. So let us add another folder. I'm going to right click and say new folder. And I'm going to call this folder utils. And I'm going to make a new file called login.module.js. And I'm going to write a function that will call my login function. And in case you think I'm just an excellent programmer, I'm going to show you something. I actually have done all the work in advance, and I'm just referring to the code that I have written as we do this tutorial. So please don't get any assumptions here that I'm a great programmer or that you should be able to code on the fly as quickly as I'm doing it here because I'm not really coding on the fly. I'm actually just showing you code that I've previously written a little bit at a time. So please relax and have fun. And if you get stuck, just push pause or backwards and reverse and play the video over again. You can do this. Okay, so to start, again, we created a folder called utils. We made a script called login.mjs. And now I'm going to import. Well, before I import it, I'm going to install it. A library called node fetch. Just cleared my terminal so you can read it better. So what I'm going to do is say npm install node fetch dash dash save and node fetch is a library that's used in JavaScript to make API calls in code. So we don't have to use curl anymore. We can now use node fetch. So I said npm install node fetch dash dash save and it's going to download the library called node fetch. If I want to double check my work, I go to package JSON. And sure enough, I now have another dependency called node-fetch, version 3.2.0. So that means I can now import fetch. So I'm going to call it fetch, and I'm going to import it from the node-fetch library. And now I have access to that function. So I am going to write a new function um, that's going to be used by our test and this function should accept two things when I log in what are the two parameters I should expect I should expect a username and a password so I'm going to use the arrow function and I'm going to say const login which is a function name equals I will now make an asynchronous function that means it's going to do reading and writing from the network or the hard drive or the database or something that takes time and so we're going to allow things to take as long as they need to and that's why we use asynchronous functions so we're going to now put the parameters that we expect and we're going to put them in an object so in an arrow function we have the parentheses around the parameters we expect and we're going to follow a javascript best practice which means we're going to expect a us username and a password but that best practice is that I put them inside of curly braces that way we don't have to put past the first name first and the password the username first and the password second we could reverse the order it doesn't matter as long as the parameters are called username and password and you'll see when we call it how that works so now I'm going to define the arrow functions behavior with the arrow so with these parameters, this is the behavior that will occur. Now I'm going to add the curly braces to surround the logic that's going to execute. When I call node fetch, I have to have specific parameters defined. So I'm going to call those parameters options, and I'm going to make them a constant because that will not change for this function. And I'm going to make them in an object. 
the first thing we're going to say in our options object is we want to post data. That means we're sending data or saving data to the API. And when you log in, you're not really saving data, but you are sending it. So that's why it's called a post. We are going to also send a body, um, which is the data we're passing to the API. And we're going to take the object, the parameters that were sent to us in the function, and create an object which we will then turn into a string. And the reason for this is to verify that we in fact have a username and a password, and then we are going to convert those back into a string using the function called json.stringify. json.stringify takes a JavaScript object and turns it into a string. Now we're going to call, or sorry, pass some headers and those headers are going to be, in this case, just one called content type. And it's going to be application JSON. Okay, so those are our options that we're going to pass to fetch. So now we need to declare our response. API response is a constant. And we are going to await fetch while it does its work. So we're going to pass a URL. You remember it, https colon slash slash dev dot steady dot me slash login. The login is our clue that we're passing it to the right endpoint. And then we need to pass the options that we've just defined. You'll notice my options here now turned blue because it's being used. I need a semicolon to end the line. Now I'm going to turn this response into the text that I got back. And that takes some IO actually to convert the memory into a string. And so I'm going to say constant login response equals API response dot text. But that's not good enough because that's asynchronous function, which means I need to see that if I hover over the text function, I see it returns a promise. A promise is something that's going to happen, not something that has. So I need to await that promise and that will convert this promise into an actual string. See how it has promise with a string inside of the angle brackets? That means that after we await, the promise will become a string. So now I've got the string in my login response function, or login response um, variable. And now I'm going to return that variable, return login response. Okay, so that's the variable I'm returning. Well, we want to test it out. So we're going to go back to our login test and we're going to change this login token to be awaiting the call to the login function. And I'm going to pass username like this. And my username is tom.tester3 at hotmail.com. And my password is p at sswzrd. Please use the username and password you created because that's way more fun. And then I'm going to say this login token should be length 36. We're missing something. Do you see what it is? Login token is not being imported. So I need to import login token. Sorry, the login function, sorry, is what's not being ported. From dot dot slash utils login dot mjs. So now I've imported the login function from this one. And we are missing something here. You see login is never used. I need to export it. Export default login. And now login is being used. OK. Let's try running that test again, npm run test. And we have a failure, unexpected reserved word. OK, what that means is that in my test, I forgot to make this arrow function asynchronous. And it's saying that the await word is not a word it's expecting to see. So I need to make this arrow function also asynchronous, which means I'm now allowed to use the word await. That's important to know. So I'm rerunning my npm run test. And I get one green check mark, which means my API has returned a valid login token. 
now I'm going to add all of this to a GitHub repository. So I'm going to say git init, git add star star. I'm adding all my files, git commit dash m, added new files. Oops, I forgot something. Node modules should not be included. So I'm going to add a new file called dot git ignore. Inside of there, it'll be called node underscore modules. Then I'm going to remove node modules, which I added by accident. Git remove recursively, forced to answer yes. Node modules, please. Git status. And I have all those deleted, but I'm not tracking this file yet, which I want to track. Git add dot git ignore. Git status. Git commit dash m added API test. Now I'm just missing my remote. So I'm going to go to GitHub and make a GitHub repository for API tests. New API tests. Okay, we'll call it see steady API tests. And I'm making it uh, I want you to make yours public, please, um, but I'm going to make this one personal. So please make yours public. And then I'm going to copy this URL. And I'm going to say git add, git remote add origin, which is the name of my remote. Then I'm going to say git push dash u origin name. And that's because my branch isn't right. So if I say git branch, it's called master and it needs to be called main so you'll notice all the steps are here that I've done I've initialized using git I've done a git add star star git commit dash m now this is the command I missed git branch dash m main that changes my branch to main you only have to do that once you only have to add the origin once and now I'm going to say git push dash u origin main this is only a one-time thing too in the future I'll just say git push because it will know where to go from then on. And now I've got my code. And congratulations, you've got your first automated API test.